y'all. Welcome to Two Funny Mamas. I'm Kim Whitley. And I am Sherry Shepard. And welcome to our special Valentine's Day episode. That's right. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. This is really special because we just did one a, a couple days ago. And so we're doing this. We decided to <laughs> actually the episode that we just put out, our 40th episode, was supposed to be our Valentine's Day episode, but we forgot. Right. So we came together and we decided to do our red. That's and right. I have something for you. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. For Valentine's, yes. Damn, look at the look at the, the backdrop. That's embarrassing. I know well, I know where it's going to go. This is look, look at the bottom of it. Look. Oh that's for you. You're my friend and I love you so much. I just gave her a dozen roses with the teddy bear that says, I love you. I love you. That's right. The only thing I would get for Valentine's Day. I know. Well, me too. So. Did you <laughs> Did you all get my Did you get my delivery? Of what? The status it, of, The status of your STD test? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> oh gosh! When I Kim, this girl, please. Kim, we're clean. Please. 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 Everyone, our listeners, I got roses. A dozen roses. Then you can give your girlfriend. Yes, and I got you a teddy bear. Thank you. I love you because I do. I love do. You. I didn't get you shit. I know. <laughs> I knew you were going to. I was. <laughs> I was. I was waiting on Valentine's Day. Oh gosh, to get it. But then we already are. we're taking the episode now. But thank you. Okay, you're right. Keep, keep giving it thank back to you. Me. I love my girlfriends. This was very nice because. I don't have no man sending me nothing. I know, me neither. So <clears> that's <throat> give you. I'm kind of like Chris and I are that your de facto so men. I love um, that. Well, I wanted to do that because it is our Valentine's Day episode. And uh, it's just some special stuff that I promised our followers we were going to talk about. So do not let me forget. This is a partial Gerald LeVert Valentine's Day episode because you two had a little love story going and we're going to share it. There was also, uh, before I forget, I wanted I wanted us to talk about maybe the one that got away. Mm -hmm. The one that got away. So remember that. Okay. Chris, I want you to remember that too because you're part of our Valentine's That's Day episode. Right. The one that got away. And uh our special Valentine's Day memory. And so we can we can actually start that off. Okay. Because remember last week or a couple weeks ago, a couple episodes ago, we had talked about Tom Joyner taking us on uh, for Valentine's Day. He flew us up to his compound in Miami with the private beach. And he had he had sandscapers come out and put they sculpted in the skin in the sand. I love you, Kim and Sherry with two hearts. Remember, Kim? I didn't know that. Yeah, That's it was serious. Gosh, I, have, I don't have pictures of anything. But oh, yeah, it said, right. it said it, he had a whole sand sculptor yeah. and it was like huge. Like even if you came and hit it, it wouldn't fall. It was, this wasn't no okie doke. The man came and did it. It was huge, like a big statue. And it said, I love you, Sherry and Kim with hearts on each side. So we also talked about the fact that he got us um, a pair of Christian Louboutins. And I, want, and I brought them because that was for Valentine's Day. Kim, do you have yours? Yes, I do. Give me a second. Yeah, you just got to take a look. Breathe. Calm and breath. Feet on the floor. Breathe through your nose and exhale through your mouth. And you're exhaling slowly. Why are you laughing, Chris? Okay, first of all, why is the I, hope you, I hope you're taping it. <laughs> we are. The camera did this on the phone. I don't know what happened. The ghost is back. Secondly, if you was in a damn yoga studio, they would have kicked you out. Why? <laughs> what are you doing? Are you trying to... But you literally seriously trying to get back because a lot of stuff... And this is what happens when you're a single mother and you're trying to do life and take care of all your business. Yeah. Stuff falls through the cracks. So before we go back to the story, because so let's get let's get a little present here. Stuff just falls through the cracks, even you know, on days like this. It was it started out as a good day. Being a single mom. So Joshua acted up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Kim had to discipline Joshua. It was a test of wills because 
Everybody goes through that. And it was, I thought that Kim was fighting with her man. I'm sitting here with, I thought literally, Kim don't have a man, but there's a big, huge fight going on between her and her boyfriend. So I run up there, Joshua's crying because she didn't have to discipline him. He's doing it. Kim's trying to still discipline. And you know, you know the thing when you're like, you're going to be all right. Stop that crying. All they care about, and Joshua said, am I going to look the same tomorrow? <laughs> He didn't say that. He did. I said, your face is okay. Everything is in place. He goes, is, it going, am I going, is anything cracked? And oh. I said, no, cracked, it was Joshua. A pillow. Really? <laughs> he, goes, he goes, am I going to look the same tomorrow? <laughs> is that what he was worried about? Yes, I'm wiping his tears he's away because he's, you know, when your mama got to go off on you, it's crazy. So Kim's dealing with that of, of being a single mom, you, you know, you're trying to be the good mood. Then you got to be the bad guy because you got to discipline because Joshua's responsibility is to take care of the dog. And she's been on him to take care of this dog. But apparently the dog didn't get to go out to pee. And so Kim's got this beautiful leather carpet, which God knows how much it mm. costs. Um, it's a beautiful leather carpet with a pee stain in the middle from the dog. So. Poor dog. Uh, poor leather carpet. Right. <laughs> That's how we look at it. Oh, Fuck that dog. Okay, I was hot. <laughs> Fuck the dog. You got Ch- Josh has got to get on this. With a pee stain in the middle. Okay. Uh, so it, as, here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you a story about. You remember Hope Flood? Yeah. Like, okay, she's not yeah, dead. She did. <laughs> Damn. Hope Flood a comic. Who's Be, still around? Who's still around? And and go look her up at Hope Flood on Instagram. Mm. She's hysterically funny. Um, when we were doing stand up with Hope, remember Sharif, her son? Yeah. She had a son named Sharif. She and, has a son. I mean, <laughs> she done killed everybody. Happy what? Valentine's Day, everybody. Her son, Sharif, one time we were doing a play. It was with Tiffany Younger. Remember mm-hmm. Tiffany Younger? And Hope had bought this jacket from like Casual Corner. Casual it was Corner. A, it was a multi. Y'all. Remember Casual Corner? Yeah. It was a multicolored jacket. It was either Casual Corner or Wilson's Letters. It was Wilson Suede and Letters. Wilson Suede and Letters. Yeah, that's our story. And the jacket was multicolored. And the jacket at that time was like $300, which you know was a lot back, yeah. way back in the day. It's a lot now. It's a lot. So anyway, she just wore to wear, to, you know, we were doing this play. It was a bunch of us comics. And she only wore the jacket. The tag was still in it because she was going to return it. Because uh-huh. that's what we did when we had to do a show. We bought something, we returned it. She was going to return to everybody. was on and on over this jacket. This relates to you and Joshua. Uh, so she wore the jacket, put it on the hanger. No, she hadn't worn it yet. It wasn't her scene. She had it hanging on the hanger. Sharif took one of them big old thick black markers and <laughs> did this all on the back of mm. her Wilson suede and leather multicolored coat. When Hope saw that coat, I blacked out the rest. <laughs> Let's just say that. I blacked out the rest because the sounds of screaming from Sharif, yeah, I blacked it out. It was it, bad. And after the horror of she was going to take, like, that was that was her rent money. She yeah. used her rent money to so get the coat. So she could look good. So she could look good and she was going to take it back and then pay her rent. Being a single mom is just, and all y'all single parents out there, you know. Yes. It's sometimes so it just overwhelmed you. So that's what Kim was going through. And then she finally, she pulled it together so we could do this. Then she realized she's on Discovery Plus. With, what is the name of the show? It's called Puppy Bowl Presents the Dog Game. Puppy Bowl Presents the Dog Games. which It's is like really, the coolest gig ever. It's such a cool gig. It's a competition show where you have dog trainers who are training their dogs. And there's two con- or judges. I know Crystal P is one yes. of them. I don't know the other guy. And Kim is the host. So you know what's funny. And it's funny because it really, Kim was in pain the whole time because she was in heels and she had to stand up. So just look at the show and see how could if you, you see, see the, if you you see the see, pain in her face. Could you see me? One, one time Grimaces. I did like this. I did like this. I said, am I running? Bent? I was bent over. You look at it on my Instagram. Look like I'm 80 years old. I got to oh go get my back fixed. Anybody know a good uh, uh, orthothot, orthopedic? Uh, I, yeah, I got spinal stenosis in my back, and I'm going to go get another. I was thinking about this. I got to shoot this week. If they only do it on Thursday, I was going to get another epidural in my back. Yeah. And if I can, I don't want to get back surgery. But they said if you just do sit-ups every day, Kim, you don't have to get back surgery. What's wrong with me? I ain't done anything. Okay, we, any when we try to do sit-ups, Kim complains. I need to do it every time. day. We can do it, do it every day. day. So you're going to call me and say, Kim, yes, 
I'll Get come. I'll come over here. And we can Andre and I together. can come over here. Yes. We have a sit-up challenge. Yes, we did. We had a no, push-up no. challenge. Did. Kim did it. I had six girls with the push-up challenge. Fifty push-up in fifty days. Kim was on there for the first three days, and she just dropped off. Because you know, I used to be able to do fifty push-ups in one setting. You I remember did. seeing video. That was was that when you were out by your pool, Sherry? Yes, Here. we lost Kim in the third day. So yep. we, we as soon as they got up to push up fifteen, I was out. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, but the show, the show is so funny. Watch to see if you can see Kim grimacing in between the dogs training. So because here's the thing: when you do a show, it con you contractually obligated to tweet about the show. Instagram about the show because you got to let people know that the show is out. So they really like it when the show is airing for you to live tweet it or be there live when it happens. And so with Kim doing all of this by herself, she forgot that right now as we're doing the podcast, her show is airing right now. So she's trying to figure out how she can do live stuff with them and do the live stuff with the podcast. So it just Sometimes it gets so overwhelming. And then you realize, I don't have a man in here just yep. like, able to help me do some stuff. So she had to take a woo moment when she came back because I thought I lost her for a second. And she just wanted to breathe and inhale and exhale. And the next thing we know, somebody snickering from uh, St. Louis. Oh. Uh. Yeah. I can't get this damn city Chris is from. Huh. Chris is over here snickering while she's wu sighing and inhaling and exhaling to get her spirit together. So long story so short around. Why? Stop my, my friend was getting me together. This is just a problem. <laughs> it's like our chairs represent our personality. What? <laughs> old chair. <laughs> it's I a beautiful Kim, chair. Kim has let me have her beautiful she blue a funky chair. What is chair? the truth? She want to work out, be lively, be sexy for men. Look at the chair I'm in. Yep, that's me. <laughs> the old broke down. Yeah, that's it. And you didn't Tired. inherit it from your auntie Sylvia. Yes. <laughs> I inherited my vagina from her too. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> happy Valentine's Day to you and yours. And there goes the camera. Is <laughs> the camera, and then the camp. We got this ghost camera that keeps sliding down. I don't know what is wrong with this camera. Girl. Not too low, because I ain't got on the right mirage. Well, okay, there we go. This one. I'm not sure. And then, here's the thing. I had this beautiful Valentine's Day backdrop. She did. So we get, we're in the bed. This is Kim's bed backdrop. Yes. When she's talking to dudes. She don't have a chair. She just sits there like she's <laughs> a bed with a blanket over her shoulders. This I, one, you intimidate a man with a bed like but, this. But that's why I want them to think this is how I'm living. Because if I took them up to my real bed with no backdrop, <laughs> <laughs> And some sheets over the uh, windows. So, you know, the backdrop I ordered from Amazon was so beautiful. I just forgot to bring it. But you live three minutes away. I know. And I'm taking no lazy behind back. We back to get it. I know. It, as long as we do. Because we're supposed to start the podcast like two hours. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it because, y'all, this is going to be a shorter. No, podcast. it's not. It really is not. <laughs> this podcast is already about 35 minutes, Kim. Oh. Yeah. So let's start the podcast. We, you know, I want to talk to you. For those of you who don't know, if you're if you're not of the R and B persuasion, there was a gentleman. I don't know, Chris. I should have asked you to pull up a picture of Gerald. If you could find one and, we and gotta, put up, we can grab a picture of Gerald Levert. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you could put it up, would you be able to put it up while we're talking so that we can yeah, refer? Yeah, ab okay, absolutely. So find Gerald Levert. Gerald Levert, who grew up in Cleveland. Yes. Yes. Okay. Down the street from me. Gerald Levert has sang, what were some of Gerald Levert's songs? Kim? Oh, first, when it came out. Casanova. 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 I ain't much on. I ain't much on. Da, da, da. Me and Romeo ain't never been friends. Can't you see how much I love you? Gonna sing it to you time and time again. Oh, Casanova. So that was one of Gerald Levert's big hits. And he's uh, the son of Eddie Levert. Of the OJs. Of the OJs. And so um, Gerald Levert is prolific. He was huge. And how did you two meet before? This is Gerald Levert. Do you have one of him, his face 
Yo, Levert. That's your sexy picture. Yeah, like one of his, of just his face. Um, yeah, we'll get it. He was always sexy. Know, Women sure. have always loved Gerald Levert. It's hard because we went to the same high school. You went to, so you guys went to the same high school. Right, but he was behind me, and I. I, I know why he was behind. I <laughs> mean, in grades. Yeah, smart, um, smart guy. Um, Did he try to talk to you in high school? Was y'all just like no, no? Group? I was out by the time he was in there. I was okay. Out. You were out. Yes, that's, that's Gerald Levert. Ooh, hey Gerald, look at Gerald. What do you think when you um, see that picture, Kim? I think, hey Bo. Um, I think, damn, I wish he was still here. Uh, my life would be different. He had the most even as smile. just my friend. He yes. So tell we me, just had fun. We just had a good so time. So what was his? Because I never met Gerald Levert. I've only listened what? to his, no. I've only listened to his. Girl, song. Gerald be right with us hanging right now at the podcast. Was he in funny? Between. Funny, funny. But people, he was funny. You know, he's funny. Like people don't know Stevie Wonder's funny. Yeah, Stevie Wonder has oh, like an so amazing silly. sense of humor. Oh my God, he's so funny. You know. um, you went to high school with Gerald, but I think that a lot of people don't know what a good, what a sense of humor he had. Anybody that hangs with you has to be able to laugh. That's what I want you to tell me. Tell me something about Gerald that most of his fans don't know. Really? Yeah. Because a lot of times we saw him with, uh, with Johnny Gill and who else was he with? He was at uh, Keith Sweat. That was when it was like LT3 yes. or something. You say LT. What was the name of the group? I forgot what it was, it was called. LT. LT. Uh, you Sweat, the- LSD, LSD or LSG, 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 LSG was Levert, Sweat, and, and Gil. Gil yeah. And then he did he do my Secret Garden with Elder Barge? I know he was uh, not Elder Secret Garden. With my Elder Secret Garden. I thought that was with uh, our boy. Uh, uh, but it wasn't Gerald. Light skinned dude. He would kill me right that now. Was L. He's in. He's in Vegas. I'll be sure. Yes, I'll, I'll be sure. sure. Okay, so it wasn't Gerald. So let me take that away. But no, Gerald was on that. Oh yeah, okay, people. that's what I thought it was Gerald. Gerald Levert is a crooner. This is, and he was very good looking, and everybody used to see, just this like is, this is the fantasy. Problem. So when you see this, you picture, said Hope Flood was, and now you said Gerald Levert is. <laughs> mm. I don't know uh, su- subtly what that is saying, but I, I don't even want to go into okay. it. Um, but looking at Gerald Levert, see when I look at this picture, Kim, I see sexy. I see fantasy. I see what I think Gerald would be like. He would come and sweep me off my feet. You look at him and you see. I see my friend, funny, sexy, talented. Um, wanted the world to see him as a great entertainer, but never really got to get the accolades that he would have gotten had he lived a little longer. Yes, because I think that like Chadwick Boseman, he was mm-hmm. taken so soon. And even in his evolution, Gerald Levert would have given us even more soulful music, oh, yeah. more mature music. It was mature anyway. Mm-hmm. But you know, we, it was just so much that artistically he had in him. But you were talking about his sister. Oh yeah, Sean Quentin Levert uh, introduced me to him years ago. Uh, she was like, you want to meet my brother? Um, I think we were going to meet her friends. Uh, it's all, it's all I fun. didn't even see you still love him. Uh, like, even in your voice. Oh, yeah. I will always love Gerald. Oh, my um, gosh. Because it was a, a chapter in my life that was I was so young. Mm-hmm. And we went through so much as young people that, you know, that I would say, um, I won't say scarred me, but you know, uh, there were some things that happened with us that, who that you know, will make you as you grow up, you look back, and you say, hmm, I guess I could have handled that differently. Right. And even with our parents involved and how they felt, should we be together? Should we shouldn't be together? Um, and when did he tell you that he liked you? Like, did he come to you and say, Kim, I want you to be my girl? No, that's the problem. Oh, <laughs> oh that's... <laughs> he wasn't, he wasn't forced at you. Like, he wasn't straight. No, and, like, no. You, you know... It, but you knew he liked you. Yes, yes. And we were friends. And we lived down the street from each other. And I would go to concerts. I would hang out. He, and he flew me out. Gerald Levert is the reason why I'm out here today. He said, come to Soul Train with me. I'm shooting in Los Angeles. Okay. I was moving to New York wow. and be an actress. 
uh, or Los Angeles, and I couldn't decide. He said, come to LA with me. Uh, and uh, flew out, um, met him at Soul Train. That was the whole thing that happened with Jack A, everything. I'm telling you, Joe LeBert is a string through a lot of stress right. in my life. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I came out to Los Angeles and you know, hung out and hung out with his sister. And So Gerald Lover, you knew that he had feelings for you. He knew that you had feelings for him. Y'all yeah. both knew that you had feelings for each other. He didn't necessarily, did you ever officially date Gerald Lover? Like, did, was there a point when y'all just was like, everybody knew him and Gerald was together? No, I think the family knew. The family. Like, they're not even the family. They knew that they didn't know. They knew because when you're an RB singer, I believe you are lots of women. Yeah. And which is really crazy. He was engaged to a dear friend of mine now. Oh, she, wow. She was not a friend of mine then. Uh-huh. Uh, she was from Cleveland. I didn't know her, you mm-hmm. know. And Renee, Renee Fowler. She's my girl. She's oh, WWE. Wow. She in the pop. Wow. That's everything. Funny. Uh, love her, but I didn't know her then, so right. I hated her. And, of course. But Gerald was in love with her from high school. That was his girl. Oh. And wow. I remember sitting at the concert. She didn't even know I was behind him like this. Oh! <laughs> I told her that story. She was laughing. I oh, said, we was at the front row at the concert, and it's just craziness. And it was the Alexander O'Neill concert. Girls, a lot going on. Wow. Uh, Alexander O'Neill. Girl, O'Neil. yeah, that was a whole thing, too, because uh-huh. Gerald found out Alexander O'Neill still to this day. Y'all ask Alexander O'Neill. He told me he dated Kim Whitney. No. No. So Gerald was upset when he oh, heard that. Oh, there was a lot going on. Oh, my God. But Gerald was dating Renee. It was a mess. Isn't it funny? But Renee, man? no, he was not engaged to Renee. He was engaged to this other girl later. I forgot. And we went to the engagement. Brian, I got her name. Uh, Renee's on one. I remember he got engaged to her. And so I've been through all his relationships, even his last Do you one. think if you would have sat down and said to Gerald, I love you, I want to be with you, that things would have been different? Like he would have said, okay, I want to do this. I mean, when you have a man... Well, we did. Okay. Um, there is a... It's a lot with our story. It's I, I know, it's so layered. It's, it's, it's a lot, but there was a time and I forgot what year it was, but it was the BET Awards. He said, Kim, let's announce that we're engaged. Oh, wow. On BET. He tried to get me to present with him. He said, we're right. going to both be presenters. And then when we present, I'm going to announce that we're engaged. Oh, wow. And I was like, hmm. You know, I was one of them chickens. I was like, wait a minute, hold up. That's a big That was a big yeah. thing. And I was like, well, uh, and this was after old drama and everything. I was like, okay, okay. Um, and, you know, we, uh, they, for some reason, I don't know why I couldn't get to present. And um, we laughed a lot of stuff off and joked stuff off, but we were like, okay, we're going to do this. And we made a pack and we said, when we turn 40 years old, was it 40 or was it 50? One of the ages. I can't remember what mm-hmm. we said because he didn't make 50. So we said that, I think that we made a pack. When we both turned 40, 50 years old, said if we're not married at 50, we will marry each other. Oh, wow. That summer. That's what we said. We You'd have been Mrs. Him. LeVert right now because. I know that would have been my name. Oh no, it'd be Whitley the Bird. Whitley the Bird. Still has qualifications, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So there was a song uh, that inspired him to write that was about you. That he wrote about you. Well, there was a a couple of things he's told me, but one song, I was like, "Where my royalties?" And I remember I'm getting my. what are them things called, Chris, that you get that you own? Publishing rights. No, the other thing. They call it a... Um, masters. Kind of, the masters. The Masters. We were in Vegas, and he was like, I'm almost getting my Masters. I'm going to have my Masters. And when I get my Masters, he said, I'm going to pay you for that song. Oh, wow. And it was so funny. I was like, what? Oh, wow. Uh, the song, Addicted to You. Addicted to You. Um, I called him one day and we talked about that. And 
and I and I said, I'm addicted to you. He said, I'm addicted to you. And we started talking. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's a song, girl. But yeah, and he made the song. And wow. I didn't get a die. Do you, um, <laughs> do you feel like because he's from Cleveland and you all were so uh, comfortable, familiar, that that actually stifles the action? Like it, it holds you back almost because you're like, well, I can always count on this person. So maybe it's like a safety net almost. Yeah, yeah. There's no rush. He called me through all right. his girlfriends. And he didn't call me to say, hey, Kim, I love you. Let's go do this and that. He called me to complain. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, hold on to me. Now, that was my song right there. That, that, that yeah, you that made me sick. Okay, you know, I won't sing it. That yeah. just came to that me. One right Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, Gerald. Um, it's, it's such a trip because this has been like... Everybody knew you and Gerald Levert, you and Gerald Levert, but it was like it was like that love story. So do you think y'all might have been, you know, gotten married? Oh, I think we really good been, friends. I think we we would have gotten married um, eventually. I think we'd have gotten married. He might have married somebody else, and he came back. I, mean, I don't know. You'd have been divorced. You came back. Yeah, the thing is, what I felt bad was, I never forget what Gerald told me. What did he tell you? If I was a regular girl, which you you'll not never chase be. the star. Okay. Gerald needed a wife. He needed a real wife at home. He didn't need an actress, you know. And I didn't understand that then. And I remember he told me it hurt my feelings. And this was in the beginning. He said there can only be one star in this family. But then that that, made, you know, that cut me because wow. I was so in the beginning and I didn't understand that. I was like, how dare you? Right. But I get it now. When you go on the road and you work like that and you come home, you don't want your wife over there. I got to go to the improv. I'm out. Right. I did that to a lot of relationships. You did. Yes. You do. And you know, it is no present. That other one. Yeah. yeah you, that other you one do. I lost because of But that's, of that. you know, going back to what we do, mm -hmm. that's very hard to be the, the, you know, typical wife where we're home. We are at, we, you know, it would be very hard because if we weren't in the pandemic, we literally, you and I would be in another city right now. Right. But uh, when but you have a man travel. Who, but if you have a man says, I provide everything, I can provide you everything. You don't have to go on the road. But you're you not see? going on the road because you have to go on the road. The thing about you and I, well, no, we I'm go going on the, on the road because I got to go on the road. You like to <laughs> <laughs> I like the checks. <laughs> but what we do, we do it because we love what we do. Like we're fortunate enough and we're blessed enough so that everything we we love what we do. As much as you complain about memorizing lines or standing on your feet all day or you know, doing you love what you do. You yeah. love getting on stage, you love making people laugh, you love being an actress. So us going out of town is not because we have to, we love doing it. It's just a part of what so trying yes. to be a, a wife where and I understand that you're on yeah. the road all the time. You got girls screaming over you, performing, you on stage, press. You want to come home to stability. Yes. You want to come home to a woman who's got some food. She's yes. got the kids taken care of. Yes. The house is together. And I understand that this now we that I've, I've gotten older, I look back and I'm like, damn, Gerald, I wish we were both mature enough to really. See, he, his this. attitude probably would have changed, Kim, had Gerald Levert still been here and then y'all came together. Because you would have found ways when you really care about somebody, you find ways to do things. At the level that you are and Gerald is, had you guys gotten together, you could have said, let's meet, I'm, I'm performing here, fly into this city with me. Or I'm going to be- let's... He did, he did yeah. a couple of times. He, he did, he came. When I asked him to come, he would come. He came and did a movie for me, he'd come visit. Um, and it was, and I, I, I'll be honest with you, my father, I never, my father sat me down and he said, this was young, I was young. And my father said, do you want a man that 50,000 women are after every day? Wow. Or do you want a man that there's one woman after one too? <laughs> at the office. At the most <laughs> too. The receptionist. Right, right. That's it. The lady at Ross. Right. <laughs> right. right. Postal but, worker, but maybe. Women who want, you know, it's interesting. Like, if you look at uh, Charlie Wilson, and he's uh -huh. older, yeah. but the number of, or, or even let's go younger, Damien Hall. We both uh -huh. know Damien Hall from the group Guide. 
so many women go crazy over yes. Damien Hall. But at the end of the day, Damien just wants to come home to his lady. Like at the end of the day, they're not taking the, ah, the panties thrown on stage. They want to come home to regular. Yeah. So I think, I think being able to be secure enough to go, yeah, these 50,000 women are, are screaming at my man, but they don't know my man. They're not coming home with my man. It, it literally is, is work to him if he's in the same place. If he's in the same place. If he's in the same place. But, you know, some people, I remember going to see Robin Thicke. He gave uh, me the front row seat tickets. And he was like, and you know, Robin Thicke, everybody get up. And Robin, it, it, he stood on the piano and he was showing his butt. All the women were going crazy. And he still said, my wife is right there. It's a birthday. Like, it just meant something different to him. So I think it would have it would have been really mm -hmm. fascinating to see you and Jerry Levert now. Yeah, I think as it's older people, mm -hmm. you know, both of you both have got hurt. Yep. Yeah, because Jerry Levert's <laughs> back would have been hurt. Oh no, Jerry's knees. Would have been, been, yeah, because Jerry Levert was a big man. Jerry, no, and Jerry was throwing, jumping on the ground every concert he came oh, on yeah. his knees. You know the thing. Yeah, he probably I had said, a knee replacement. Boom. I said, you, you can't do that. And so he would put a pillow down or something to fall on. I said, please stop doing that. Because I knew as we get older, I was like, hey, hey, hey. Cartilage. Yeah, you're going to need the knees. But he would go down on his knees for performance. Oh, wow. And uh, That's hard on your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Gerald Laver, he would have had a couple knee Wait, replacement surgeries. So. Oh, go get it. You're right. I think it's right here. Oh, my God. It's sitting right here. I found what it. is it? Oh, okay. We're about I to get it. I in my garage. And... What is it? I'm trying to throw it out. I'm like, are you crazy? No. Is this some Gerald gave you? This is a Gerald LeVert bear. Oh, oh look at that. He threw this out at every concert. He did. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. The Gerald LeVert bear. Yeah, wait, wait, which one my hair going? Oh. Um, he threw he threw this out for the women at every concert. Oh, it is and a loving, a loving fan caught that, and Kim snatched her by the hair and took the bear out of her hand and said, this is mine. <laughs> This is a Joe LeVert concert. You know what? His family gave this to me. Oh. Um, when he passed. Uh, they gave me a bunch of stuff. His shirts. A whole bunch, not a lot, but, you know, some things that I could have for his jackets. But this wow. was definitely I wanted to keep this because he, all the fans knew. He was the teddy bear, so he threw he this was, out. He was known as the teddy concert. bear. So I, I keep this. Andre tried to throw it away. He was like, that figures, Andre. Andre was like, let a kid have it. <laughs> 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 okay, drink for it. Andre, wrong with let him? a kid have a sleep at Gerald Levert. No. Yeah, so, you know, so there it is. And we can have a part two to this, but I will say there's an article of, in Sister Sister Magazine. Yes. That if you really want to know how much Gerald cared about me, there was an article. He did an interview, I didn't know. And he said, the one true love, love. of my life is Kim Whitley. Wow. It destroyed all kind of relationships. I know it did. It did. Because I uh, hate you, bitch. You know, <laughs> yeah. that time was mad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. At the yeah. time I was engaged, he broke up with me. It was a lot. Oh, and God, that, your fiance broke yep, up with you? From that one article. Wow. Um, sister, sister, she wants to interview us on the a Wednesday or Thursday. So oh, okay. That sister, that. sister is, is um, yeah, Jamie Foster. Jamie Brown. Foster. Brown. She just asked us. Wow. So I'd like to ask you, uh, who was the one that got away for you? Um, well, you know this. The one that, but thank you for sharing, Gerald Levert. I yeah. love you, Gerald Levert, and I love his family. You do. You're very close to his family, yeah. his kids, everybody. So if y'all, hopefully this answers some of the Gerald Levert love story for y'all on Valentine's Day. So now we move on to the one that got away. There was someone who uh, was in my life maybe close to 20 years ago, and it was right before I got married. And we came up, we came up together. We would go to church together. It was so funny. We would go to church together, and um, we just never connected at the right time. Like he would always. I, I remember right before I got married, I think we might've talked, but I was getting married, you know, like it ne sometimes I think when men like you, they're a little bit slower on the move. I don't know why this is Chris. Like, you know, you like the girl, you know, you want to be with the girl, but sure. it takes you long to go to the girl and yes. say, this is how I feel about you. And by that time, and by that time, time yeah. yeah, she like, 
so th this is kind of what happened. And by this time it was like, you know, I went and got married. Why does it take so long, Chris? I, 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 I'm trying to think of that too, because like I've been guilty of it and I know exactly what you're talking about. And the only thing, if you just like look really deep down, trying to be honest about it, the only thing is you're probably trying to protect yourself because you're like, oh, this is different. Like if you, if you, if you're just out hunting for, <clears throat> and you're going to go for it, you're just going to go for it. You don't care really. And then that happens. But if you're like, mm, this, this is different you're probably more apprehensive because you don't want to look like a fool. Oh, wow. Isn't that something? It Well, this was, I went in, I got married and then I had my son and then went through a divorce and he had his own career happening and we never really connected because he had his own thing going and I, had, I was going through a divorce and then, mm -hmm. you know, at, at, at points in our life we would connect and then it just never, nothing ever happened because it's both busy. That's another thing, like you say with Gerald, you're running around, you're both busy, you're both on two different. Right, you know, right, right. And then I got married again. So, you know, right. you didn't get married and you're trying to make the best of it. With a man, you don't even want to be married. Is it? <laughs> is it? I never got married. I think that's why. Isn't it? Is it you don't, does it does it feel good <laughs> when you when you does it does it feel good? So, I hate being right about stuff. But like, if you like someone and they end up with someone, you're like, oh, that's so great for you. And you legitimately, you're not messaging them on the side. You're not trying to break anything up. Doesn't it? Isn't it the weirdest feeling in the world when you feel good slash feel terrible for the person whenever the the even a marriage ends that you were like, this is not gonna work. Like, it, especially if you kind of liked that person or something, you're like you are making a poor choice. And it's not even to say, hey, come to me. It's just a weird thing to juggle, isn't it? Well, it, well that's nice that you brought that up on Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, well, well, Chris, do you have one that got away? Oh, probably. I don't, uh, you know. The, probably. You know there it is. I'm right here. <laughs> I was going to say, she hasn't She hasn't gotten away just yet. We're, I'm yeah, hoping. I haven't got to St. Louis Airport yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to have to, she's, it's going to break down. She's going to show up the day COVID ends and then it's going to switch directly into me carrying bags and waiting for her talking to people in the airport. Right, Sherry? Isn't that how it'll go? That's exactly how it will go. Mm -hmm. You know, getting with someone like Kim on a really serious level requires a lot of stamina and a yeah, lot of and you in a lot of you can't self-esteem is important. Self esteem is important and being secure and being with someone like Kim Whitley, you can't take stuff seriously. Like you can't take no, it personally no. either. That's the one that you can't take it personally. Yeah. And it's a it, and you have to know that going in. And I think a lot of people, not trying to make you sound like you've just been out there, but I think men have tried and they've said, I can handle this. Yes. And they also want to come in and protect you. We have this thing where men want to always protect yes. us. And we're so independent, it's very hard. You know? I, I think what people don't understand is communication is key. And what a lot of men and women do, we don't speak our truth, especially when we're young. We don't Great have point. Yes. It, now, be honest with yourself. Like, because listen, Sherry, as you describe this, uh, this unique person with eyes on her who's got a lot of busy things going on, you can't go in and think that you're going to wrangle that into your idea of a partner. No, you need to be, you need to be water. You gotta, you gotta be along for the ride and you're going to have to flow whatever way she's going. It's a hard one. Yeah. When you think about getting with a, a, a person who's very busy, you know, because here's the thing when you use, and I'm just going to speak for me. When you used to get with people who don't have anything, they always got time for you. Yeah. They got time to go to breakfast. Lunch, Great point. Dinner, yes. Talk on the phone. Come help you with every because they got so much time, time. on hand. But when you're with a person who, let's say, we're with people who is as busy as we are, we're not gonna see each other a lot. We we got to pull out the calendar right. and plan stuff because just like what happened now, you got to get on and tweet about your show. You got to do social media. You got to meet with people. You got stuff. Uh, yeah, you got to right. get up at four in the morning for a daily pop. Sure. I got to five for the dish. I got another show. So it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it's every day. This is this is a great point. And I think that it's you should stop and reflect on this and 
if you're listening and you do this, maybe reassess what you spend your time on. Imagine if we were still sitting here quarreling over Kim walking away to take a call. Think about that. People yeah. set themselves back hours, days, months, years, just sitting there trying to assess that. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. this is who she is and this is going to happen. You know what I'm talking about? Like, Imagine if we were sitting here pouting still. But that's the whole thing about not taking things personally and not yeah. taking and, and being I like a, what Chris a, said, he said being like water. Yeah, because you have to be adaptable. Yeah. Is that a word adaptable? Yes, you have to be flexible. Ask, ask Alexa. <laughs> Is adaptable a word, Alexa? Alexa. Oh, I did it wrong. Now she's blue. Yeah, she's stuck. <laughs> She so, said. By she the said. way, did you see that Michael B. Jordan commercial where he is? A yes, Alexa? Alexa is so good. We talked about it on our show. We talked about it. And Alexa was big and black. That's what made me laugh. I love that Alexa was a man, but this is what I said on Dish. I don't know what you said on Daily Pop. I'm firing everybody on my team because I wanted to. Why didn't I go on that audition? Oh, to be the girl. To be the girl, saying Alexa. Because they didn't know no name. Right. They needed a no name. Oh, they didn't want to overshadow my right, Are you serious? Because I would have been mugging for the camera. I'd have been like, Alexa. Exactly. It's too much. My tongue would have been <laughs> they'd have been like, stop cut, licking cut, on Alexa. Cut, cut, cut. That's all stop you touching. That Alexa commercial. She'd be she'd so be a, a, she'd be Alexa. I'm telling you. Was the hug was like, no, Alexa, no. Um, that commercial with Michael B. Jordan was so sexy. Well, what, you know, being Valentine's Day, we wish all of the lovers out there an amazing day. What would you want in a man? What is, what characteristics do you want in a man? Wow, that was a good one. Uh, um, wow, right now they've changed. Uh, what you want in a man? What, yeah, because, I mean, they were fine. You just want early. them alive? Yeah, when, when I was younger, <laughs> yeah, COVID free, what I want. The first thing I want in a man is, of course, looks. But yeah, I think your stomach has got to tell you. Like your stomach. You can't be no ugly dude. I don't care if somebody else's stomach don't sexy. tingle. Right, right. As, as long as you find that person sexy. Sexy, sexy or good looking. One, something that makes me go, oh. And I'm not talking about they got to have a great body. I'm not all into that right now. But your face. I got to be able to look at your face. I got to be able to I hate it, how aggressive you are. I, I got to be able say, to your face. Sherry, don't you feel like she would bite as she, like, if she appreciated what? that face, she's like, that's not, like, that would yeah. be, like, hurtful. I feel like Kim is going, if I can't bite you in your face, yes. I don't mm -hmm. want you. Well, I think that you have to be able to stomach each other, like, and then I want a man who's passionate, who is passionate about whatever the hell he wants to do. I don't care if he's collecting stamps, and that's his gig. He got to be passionate about life that he wants, that he right. not my career. Right. What are you passionate about? What do you love to do? And um, he's got, of course, you know, have some spirituality, the Lord. He's got to be grounded in something. He can't be no atheist. Oh, yeah. yeah I, 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 I can't take it. I'm going to punch him in his face. Yeah. Um, and then he's got another. <laughs> she just thing. said he must represent Christian <laughs> values or she'll physically <laughs> assault him. <laughs> Yes, physical assault is high on the list. Right, he while maintaining Christian values. <laughs> yeah, great. He got to have some kind of spirituality because I'm going to punch him in his face. Right, because he's going to need somebody to pray to when he's scared of Kim coming after. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, what about, what about a sense of humor? Does he have to make you laugh? Does he have to, or you, you're fine with him being serious? He got to be able to take you text messaging at the same time and totally zoning out. Right. <laughs> this is where you have to accept Kim and all of her everything. Cause she, you see, she ain't even like paying no. attention. No, it's Kim is on her phone texting. Mm -hmm. she, she, you might get a smile out of her, but <laughs> <laughs> so is that everything on your no. list? Uh, of, like, what about sense of humor? What about uh, you want somebody that travels? You want somebody that makes a certain amount of money? Like what if men come to you saying. Uh, I can do this for you. I can do that for you. Does that do anything for you? Does it, you know, yes. it does. Uh, okay. Oh, you know what your love language is, Kim? Yeah. It's someone in your house. Siobhan! Siobhan! What's happening? Siobhan! What happened? What happened? 
listen, I'm in the middle of a podcast. I told him to get the poop up. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Get the what? The poop up. I said, get the dog the poop. I said, get the poop up and take the dog up. Uh-huh. He was like, no. I said, Joshua, get the poop up. If you come back and do what you're doing. Yeah. My mama said, I can rap. I said, then your mama. So I popped him like that. And you would think I didn't kill him. I said, just, your, just another day in the Whitley house. I said, did your mama tell you about your attitude? Just get the poop up. Take the dog out. I like this. This is get, this is getting me ready to to be, you know, in this position in a black family. That's right. <laughs> you don't know. Okay, that just took me out. It is getting him ready to be in the position in a black family. And I said, I said you can put your phone down. Come back. To Absolutely. Your phone. <laughs> it's what you get when you step into the daddy role okay. of a single take, mama. Taking yeah. notes. Taking notes, yeah. ladies. <laughs> Kim, if you won't, if you won't have me, I'm going to have to have you sign me up for somebody. I, I you know, well, you be, certainly put it on your resume. You used to deal with black women with kids. You were about to show. <laughs> Okay, we know what's going on. We kind of went thrown for a minute. Mm. Uh, so, Kim, you've given us, and, and don't mind Kim because she still has the message and she's got a show going on at the same time. You've talked about the nexus of what you want in a man. Yes. I said what I want in a man, kind of the same thing that you want. I want you to be passionate about what you do. I need you to be king in your territory. I need you to be successful at what you do. So see, I'm not into being passionate and you trying to start something because that takes a lot of energy that I don't have. So I need you to have realized which potential is like, we always have potential to keep going, but I need you to have already like where we're at. We have a lot of potential that we fulfilled and we're still going. Mm -hmm. I I want somebody who's on that level of me of, and even more uh, who's doing what he loves to do. He's passionate. I need somebody who makes me laugh. Okay. A sense of humor yes. for me is so important because you got to laugh at certain things. There are certain things that you go through that are so serious. I need you to just, we got to laugh together. Family yeah. is important to Family me. Important. Um, you, I would love... Here's, a, here's, a, here's a, a serious question. Um, when you meet somebody or, or whatever, and there's different circumstances, right? It, like you don't, they don't have to be involved with their family, but it, like there at least needs to be a good story or something. Because if there's just like, I just choose not to talk to my parents or whatever else, like it's kind of like, ugh, like I feel it's it's a weird place yeah. to be, right? I mean, because for me, family is cause is important because I like to get together. I like family get-togethers. Yeah. I love as cr- crazy as my family is, it, you know, and drama filled as my family is. I love it when all of the nieces and nephews come over and the cousins come over and we swim and we dance and we listen to me. I, that's important to me. So it would be a little bit hard if you are estranged from your family, but then I want you to embrace mine. Yeah. Friends right. support. I want someone, my first husband, when he would walk into the house and see people over, it would send him into a craze. Really? Yes. He did not like Jeffrey is the same way. When too many people are at Jeffrey's house, he is like, mommy, when are they leaving? He's not, he, he doesn't mind going to the party. He don't want the party at his house. I want somebody who doesn't like we, See, I have party. I got people. On. We, we have well, our people, parties together. Boy, people have left me just because I got too many people. Wow. Who left me? Well, I tried to leave oh, you. Oh, I, that, yeah. that, okay. That's like you all the time. All you the have time yeah. I'm just saying for like events, you have somebody at your house, yes. but I think that we're ever hopeful. There, there was, you know, we're ever hopeful that we will have our Valentine at some point in the future. I'm actually very excited. You know, the what possibilities. Saying? I'm excited at the possibility of who, who is there, who is might come out of the shadows. I don't know. I'm excited. 
Is Valentine, so does somebody need to, so if, either, if somebody's dating either of you, do they need to care about Valentine's Day? Like, is it important yeah, to you? Yeah, yeah that's important. Yeah, don't do that. Laughing. Are you crazy? Yeah, don't, you know don't what? Do that. Don't Be, do that. Birthday's Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. and Valentine's Day is a woman's holiday. Yes. Come on now, don't, don't not come in and say, I was thinking about you, it's Valentine's Day. You know what I would love? A candlelit dinner with, I love candles. A lot of candles. Some for me, I stopped eating my prime rib, but fish with some vegetables, a nice glass of wine with some CBD oil infused. <laughs> and this, um, Getting specific here. Yeah, have and I've never tasted it before, but they tell me it's amazing because I'm diabetic. I can't do wine, so they said that they have like non-alcoholic wine and it's infused with CBD oil. So, so oh, there you go. A little oh, buzz, awesome. yeah. I, yeah, no, I hear this fr from you. When you was over at my house, yeah, I'd have seen that, that. If you'd have seen that, you'd have took it. Kelly Clarkson won't talk about this. <laughs> Kim is gonna be on a Kelly Clarkson show. Yeah, it's gonna air on the twelfth of February. I guess it's the, it's the Valentine's Day. Special. So this so it'll gonna, same day as this. Oh, so, so the same day as this, Kim uh -huh. is gonna be on Kelly Clarkson. I'm going to be a guest on the View, which is gonna air. Oh, it would have already aired by the time we air this. We'll go back and check it out. Yeah. So go ahead and check it out. Um, but but what were we just saying? So oh, yeah, I would like a, a candlelit dinner, for your and I would literally. This is what I would love to do. I want a massage oh, from you, ooh. not you, Chris. From you. Yeah, I well, from you. Yeah, from from like who, yeah. the what? Who like if I was supposed to? Do they need myself. if they show up? Do they need a table? No, we can do it on the bed. But I'm going to massage oh. you. I'm okay. going to massage you, and then I want you to massage me. Got it. I just, you know, you've had some bad luck with uh, masseuses and tables recently. So. I know. And I still keep going back, just like these marriages. I want a nice massage. I'd love to go into the jacuzzi. Yeah. If you got a jacuzzi, if not, you know, it's okay. We can get the bathtub. Nice Kim, I, Kim, I canceled the uh, jacuzzi if you're getting that uh, epidural again. I don't want another situation where you go in <laughs> <laughs> when you're not supposed to get wet. I'm going to pull my tub, oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay, Chris, you so I'm really appreciating your funny today. What what would your what would your and I want a gift. But let's not forget that. I do want a gift for Valentine's Day. And I want a nice I would like a nice yes. gift. Like those shoes? Like those shoes you got? These are oh. my shoes. Wait, but this is my shoe, my Valentine's Good Lord. Gift from Tom Joyner. This is because we had talked about this. And move the box up. That's the that's the box that comes with Louis Vuitton box. Okay. I got my box too, but it's on the it's on the shelf. I didn't bring it. These right here. I don't know if you could get the glimmer of this is a boot. It's spiked with gemstones. You can tell they cost a lot because of this. <laughs> spiked with fairy fairy teeth. My gosh. You can tell these shoes are because you see. <laughs> <laughs> what is okay, that? So, just to bring, we're gonna try and Kim got her red bottoms, her platform from Louis Vuitton, but uh, from Christian Louis Vuitton. But even still, now I can really appreciate. Look at these studs. That's amazing. Look at you. Look All at right. this. That's but I want to show the back of the of the Christian Louis Vuitton. I can wear my shoes. Wedge. Look at that. And this is what she was comfortable in all night this long. This is what she was not comfortable in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Look at the shoes. That way. Now. now Look at the chair. <laughs> oh my gosh. I that's have a, a that's oh insane. I have a question. I have a question. I walked around in these for about six. It's oh, amazing. Seven hours in this heel oh right here. God. Both of these boots. They they this is I like an emergency room. But both of them, your shoes actually when I look at them, very beautiful. Oh, I was quite comfortable. I need I to know not, Valentine's Valentine's Day. Yes. This is when Kim was going to get these, and I saw her <laughs> after them, and I got them in I saw something like that at Ross. I <laughs> <laughs> All right. That Valent was Valentine's Day gift. I, you know what I'm hoping? Tom I'm hoping from Tom Joyner. Thank you, Tom. We love you. I am hoping that somebody sends us something special for Valentine's Day. Well, you know Day. what? Chris ain't going to do it. So. Oh, why are you doing that? You know what Chris going to do? I know, I know what you're doing, Kim. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. And you know yeah. what? I'll still play the game. We'll play the game. Oh, uh, I got some roses and I got a bear from Sherry. 
Um, I know, but I'm not going to make love to you or nothing get, like that. I but I used you. to get so much for Valentine's Day that it was overwhelming every year. <laughs> I got so much from everyone. I got, what I realized is how loved I am, men and women, but I used yes. to get so many flowers, so much chocolate, so many, like Tiffany gifts and everything. It has dwindled. I've gotten gifts. I still and, get gifts and things uh, uh, from people, but I would like something from a man that you, man. I would too. Okay. You know what I'd like? I have, I have one good person. He was really good at gifts, but um, I would like what would you like? The same thing. I think I would like a dinner. I would like. I would like to even go out somewhere and sit around mm -hmm. a fireplace or something like that. Me too. And we want to kiss. That's yep. I want to kiss. kiss too. I mean, you might laugh. I want to kiss. Like you don't want to kiss on Valentine's. I want to kiss. I want to kiss and hold it. Thank you. Do you see these lips? They big for a reason. <laughs> I don't know. My lips might be three. Let's get a screenshot of that. Yeah. Because they are bigger. Siobhan's lips are bigger. Who's big? My lips are Sherry's lips. In the camera. In the camera. Let's see. In the let camera. Us, let us know in the comments. Okay. No, don't punch. Just regular lip hold. Don't. Just regular lip. Stop pushing your lips. I'm not pushing them out. You are. My lips are big. I'm just trying to let They're people. They're not that big. Okay, side, by side. side by side. Side by side. Her lips are bigger? Yes. Mom, that's because her head is smaller. <laughs> <laughs> my lips are so big. Oh my God, I never looked at you as big lips. Yeah. She got lips. me? Even my bottom lip? I got this was really crazy. I got my daddy's lips. <laughs> don't tell me that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, don't no dude. You got your daddy's lips. Well, wait, see me meet my daddy. I'm like, oh, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh my God! I have, I have a question. I got a question. Kim Sherry, it, whether it's Valentine's Day or any weekday month of the year, if someone's mother is around, would you all ever call their mother to straighten out their son that you're dating? I need to know this. You know, if it. <laughs> Only you know, it's like great laughing faces emergency. I don't like exactly. I don't like involving family members in my stuff because family don't forget what your person did did to you or what you didn't did. I so I like to keep stuff in the house. Yep. But you will call somebody's mama. I, I'd have called so many dudes mamas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm a I'm a talented. My brothers call me that all oh, since growing you would up. Call, you'll call Joni I, if I we have mama. issues. She said, oh, I, Oh, I would call her. Oh, I call no, Joni. I ain't even dating. Her. Matter of fact, I'm about to call Joni and tell her that you said that now you're ready to be in a black family. Yeah. Like to tell her. Did you know that, Joni? You didn't raise a half that? black son? Right. Didn't know that, did you? He wasn't really ready to handle the black situation. Yeah, now he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's good to call someone's mother if they have a but good what? mother. Okay, but what? calling his mama because the mama raised him you know like joshua i'll know his uh in, what is it idiosyncrasy yeah that one uh-huh and the mama knows that you know all the weird stuff he was doing growing up but i could see asking the mother for advice but joshua 35 years old yeah he acted up with his girlfriend he don't want to hear that his girlfriend and ran to kim and then not kim calling him going joshua he no, started. no, no, I'm going to call both of them. I'm going to have them all on the phone and say, look here, Joshua. Now that this shit have found your porn, I told you. <laughs> I told you they can't stop that nasty little hat. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is why Jeffrey said when he gets married, he's going to let me stay in the uh, the uh, room behind the garage. <laughs> He'll let me live in the room behind the garage. It's very nice of him. Well, at least he's going to take care of you. Joshua's gonna take care of you too as long as you don't bother him. Oh no, I'm gonna bother him. I'm one of those mothers. Mm. Oh yeah. He gonna, you know, he gonna get a woman that's gonna be like, uh, Miss Kim, I got this. No, that's what I'm, I'm afraid gonna of. tell the woman, look here, you have you seen my credits? <laughs> don't even get it twisted. Put me on your Instagram page to see how many likes you get. <laughs> oh, God. Don't, don't take a picture of the cane or the walker. <laughs> Just put me on there. Put my wig on there. Okay. Oh. This, this is my biggest fear about Jeffrey getting with a woman. That I'm going to say to her, you know, Jeffrey likes this. He's he's pretty spectacular here. 
This is when he gets quiet yes. and, you know, he likes his laundry this way. And she's going to look me in my eye and she's going to say, Miss Shepard, I know exactly what Jeffrey needs. Oh, that will send me into a spiral because there are, we can give our son everything. Right. But that's the thing. I, and, and then, you know what you're going to say? Let let her come to me and say that. Look at my hand. Look at my hand. I'm <laughs> pulling the air. I'm going to say, okay, uh, Miss uh, uh, Bonnie or Benifa or Susan or whatever, or Karen, whichever way you go, or uh, 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 Ajene, whatever. <laughs> let me try to you. I got that, right? But I'm telling you the stuff. If you think that's all he needs in life, honey, let me, that's going to run out. That ass of yours going to fall. So okay. you need to get some other skills that my son is going to need. Oh, that's okay? a good one, Kim. Yeah. Now, let me okay. tell you that. All that's going to be raggedy. And we'll have, pop a couple babies out, and you're going to be peeing on yourself. So look here. <laughs> By the time you finish, she's going to be like, stop, stop, stop. Joshua. She's going to she be in the bed going, uh, she got to go. She got to be <laughs> she's, in the house. She's Your mama, say. I want you to put your mother out on, I don't care where she go. Oh, no, no, no. That ain't going to be, I'll be like, all this, this house, this is my inheritance. All this y'all staying in? No, I put the down payment on the house. What oh, you talking about? no. You better hope I don't ask for the master bedroom because even roommates, whoever pay the most, get the master. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, we're going to have our sons in therapy. Oh, oh God. Oh, he's going to be in therapy God. this morning anyway. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> I can't wait to tell you about it. Oh, well, wow. I think that we've, uh, I think that we've kind of exhausted our happy, our, Valentine's, our Day. happy Valentine's Day episode, which was supposed to be only about twenty minutes. Yep. <laughs> and um, I wanted to promote a black business really quickly. If you can, you pull up a picture if you can find one, Chris, of Shanice Jackson sure. from Married at First Sight with her husband uh, Jepthy. It's J E P T H E. I watched this show called Married at First Sight, and there was a couple on there. And Mary, you lived it, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, I definitely. <laughs> there, the couples on there, they they don't meet each other until they walk down the aisle, and they have a psychologist, a pastor, and like a sex therapist. And based on extensive interviews, they put you with who they think you're compatible with and he, who you would be best successful with. So there was a girl on there, Shawnice Jackson, who I fell in love with. She had been celibate for a year. She had said she was she was a hairdresser trying to you make her wigs and make her way. And she had prayed. She said, I'm going to go on this show and be really open. And they hooked her up with a man named Jeffy Pierre, who was a school teacher uh, from the Caribbean. His mother raised seven boys. And they put them together. Uh, Shanice is like, ah! you know, all out there. She actually did a lap dance for him at the reception, and he was not having it. They went through an extremely difficult time. Wow. Like, because Jeff is real, like, in, introspective and quiet. And they went through a really difficult time where he wanted to court her. He was not physical with her. And they finally got intimate. They fell in love. They had a baby. They stayed together. Because you have the, at the end of six or eight weeks or 14 weeks, you can decide if you want to stay together or go your separate ways. They decided to stay together and work it through. She got pregnant. They have a little girl named Laura. And they've been through it, been through it. Now you see Jeffy, he's smiling all the time. They're married. So anyway, I fell in love with Shawnee's and Jeffy. And have you found have you find a picture, Chris? On it. There we go. He was waiting on you to stop talking. Oh, okay. Well, I <laughs> so, this I like is the whole season. I, no, it's just I I go fell ahead, in love. Just with go ahead. So Shawnee's makes wigs. And she's got, and she st- she opened up her own studio. She's doing it. She and her uh, Instagram is Yes Styles, Y E S S Styles, and she makes wigs. And so I've always, I you know, uh, kept in touch with her because I love her and I love the little my little niece Laura. And so she said, I want to make you a wig. So this is Shawnice made this wig for me. Oh, which is so I just want to say it's so amazing like now I didn't put any curls in it this is just right. fresh out what the box is it? Y-E-S yes could you look this up on Instagram uh, is it Y-E-S oh, we'll, style? We'll, we'll, oh. we'll put it up we'll put the handle and oh, website and all up. that oh, so she does custom wigs and I'm telling you this a now, lot of hair too it's yes. a lot of three S's it's three S's yes, yes, yes style. styles and it feels like so good, and it it's like you know it's it's a lace front, but you can't tell, 
And so I pulled it up because I'm moving around a lot and I don't have any bobby pins in it to, you know, anchor it. But I just wanted to promote Shawnee's Jackson of Yes Styles because she's a small owned business and she's just really trying to get out there and she's making you one. Oh, she is? Yes, she's making you one. So, and oh, uh, she's very excited to do it and she's so humble and her and Jephthah are an amazing couple and I just wish them best. Watch Married at First Sight. You know what you get on a show like that? Uh, if I can get divorced real quick. <laughs> you can. You can do oh, the prenup. I would do you, the after 14 weeks, you say you have to live with them. You got to move in with them. Oh, shit. Yes, you got to move in with them for, I think, six weeks. But you get to say if you want to continue, if you want to try. Okay. And, and you got, they do an extensive interviews and they put you I, in who I they you're compatible with. That's fine. But I'm going to tell you, I slip some money to those producers. <laughs> I'll be like, make sure don't, I don't want no raggedy. <laughs> Money to the producer. Wouldn't that be terrible if you walked down the aisle and he was oogly? Oh, oh my God. No, I wouldn't be walking down the aisle. See, that's the thing. When Shanice walked down the aisle, Jeffy is so handsome. So she was like, oh my God. Oh, so you walked down the aisle and that's, that's when, when you see, see him for the first time. And then when Jeffy saw her right. walking there, he was, you could see no. he was like, oh, Shabai okay, would have sent me a picture by now. <laughs> All right. All we have we got all the credits in the world right here. Sherry, let's audition. You have just shown up. You're looking beautiful, and your groom is revealed. Sherry, how do you react if he's fugly? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Let her sit in it. Okay. And scene. <laughs> Kim, yeah. Kim, yep, Sherry, oh. please. Yeah, Kim. Now Take your over. turn. Take over, Chris. Okay. With Kim. All right, Kim. All right, Kim. You've got your. You got your best. It's my bail right. It's my bail right. Bail is beautiful. Okay. So beautiful. Okay. Thank you. This is so good. I'm so excited. Okay. Open the doors. Here they go. And oh my God, I'm about to cry, Jerry. What the fuck? <laughs> Ms. Whitley, uh, specifically in your pre-interview, you, you mentioned that looks were not a, an issue. What, what's the problem? No, 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 sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. That's not what I said. Somebody read that wrong. Somebody read that wrong. I said, Ian, I know that somebody from a computer mistake, but I said, oh, it is important. Gosh. And why is he only four foot three? <laughs> you thought you said you wanted little. I, what I said is if his last name is <laughs> short. I said short last name. That's what if his last name was short, <laughs> I could be Kim Whitley short. Yeah. I just said I want no little man. I didn't say that. I have been to these little men. I'm not doing you it You no have more. made my stomach okay. hurt. That was fun. This has been the most fun Valentine's day special episode and we hope that we made you <laughs> laugh which i know we did thank you for that's my gift to kim the teddy bear that says i love she you she left the tag on it because she's gonna take it back <laughs> <laughs> and then, when they and i'll be like i need that back and right. the, and go give them to josh and tell Joshua you love him. I gotta teach Joshua how to give gifts on Valentine's Day. I know Jeffrey doesn't give me any. He didn't give me nothing for Valentine's Day. I'm gonna have to go tell him. Jeffrey, sure, Mom, make sure Joshua knows how to give his mommy something. Alexa, remind me to tell Jeffrey to give me a gift for Valentine's Day. It's gonna remind you at my house. When should I remind you? Oh, in 15 minutes. Okay. There you go. That was good. Okay. So we. I'll remind you 15 minutes. Thank you. So we just want to let anybody know who's out here in the ethos, who's watching us right now, what do we want to let them know? To please subscribe to Two Funny Mamas in case we don't get any Valentine's Day. Thank at you. least we have you. Yes, at least we have <laughs> you. That would be the best Valentine's Day gift that you could give Kim and I. Yes. Tell your friends and family to subscribe. Click the subscribe button. If you want to get merchandise, go to uh, buyjack.com slash Two Funny Mamas. And thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Happy Good night. Valentine's Day. Happy, Happy Valentine's Day, Chris. There's Happy no Valentine's Day. There's no Valentine's Day song that we can end with. Well, That's well we song. will. We will end with that. Valentine's we can sing together. What Valentine's Day? What love Stevie Wonder ain't did no Valentine's Day song. But it's just a love song. What's that Valentine's um, Day? There's something that's got Valentine's Day. Uh, 
uh, it's always, I will always love you. Oh, Ribbon in the Sky. Will always love you. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody.